I'd like you to imagine that you go to a supermarket to buy a loaf of bread that costs you $100,000. Yes, you heard me right. A loaf of bread costing $100,000? Now I'm sure you must be thinking I've got it all wrong. But I can tell you it's true, so hear me out. This only happens when your country has been hit by hyperinflation. Then what exactly is hyperinflation that leads to this catastrophic phenomenon? What impact does it have on the middle class and overall society? How do the 1% elite benefit out of hyperinflation? And what are the solutions? Stick along because I'm here to tell you all about it. Hyperinflation is an extreme and rapid rise in prices which is characterized by devaluation of national currency, leading to a loss of purchasing power for individuals and businesses. There are several factors that can contribute to the onset of this phenomenon. One common cause is excessive money supply growth, often resulting from an unsustainable fiscal policy. When governments resort to printing money to finance their expenditures, the increased money supply floods the economy, leading to a surplus of currency chasing a limited amount of goods and services. This excess money causes prices to skyrocket, fueling a vicious cycle of rising prices. If we were to look back in history, Numerous countries have experienced the devastating consequences of hyperinflation. One notable example is the German hyperinflation of the early 1920s following World War I, where prices rose at an alarming rate and savings became worthless. Middle class was decimated, while the wealthy managed to navigate the crisis more successfully. Uncontrolled government spending, excessive endless borrowings, and the money creation to finance budget deficits can lead to hyperinflation, which disrupts the delicate balance between money supply and available goods and services. So is hyperinflation bad for everyone in a country or it's otherwise? Like it's beneficial for a few and detrimental to many. Today we will unmask the whaled wealth and its devastating impact on society at large while enriching the 1% elite. So here is to hyperinflation. Hyperinflation, despite its devastating consequences for the general population, can provide a unique opportunity for wealth accumulation for those with access to specific assets and resources. This phenomenon creates an environment where the wealthy and politically connected can exploit the situation to their advantage. So let's dive a little deeper. During hyperinflation, as the currency rapidly loses value, asset prices tend to soar. Tangible assets such as real estate, precious metals and commodities become highly sought after as a means to preserve wealth. The wealthy who already possess significant assets and investments experience substantial gains as the asset values increases dramatically. So while their wealth is enhancing, the majority of the population suffers. Politicians, as key actors in shaping economic policies, can exploit hyperinflation to enrich themselves by manipulating the fiscal and monetary policies to their advantage, thus exacerbating the economic crisis for personal gain. One way politicians exploit the situation is through corruption and embezzlement. As the government struggles to stabilize the economy, there is often a lack of transparency and accountability in financial transactions. Politicians use it as an opportunity to divert funds for personal use, hence concealing their illicit activities. Furthermore, they may engage in insider trading by exploiting their position of power. They use their influence to gain privileged access to valuable assets or investment opportunities. These self-serving actions further widen the gap between the wealthy political class and the rest of the population struggling to make their ends meet. Hyperinflationary environment often facilitates the concentration of wealth in the hands of the top 1% elite as they already possess substantial wealth and diverse asset portfolios. The wealthy elite can diversify their investments into international assets, such as foreign currencies, stocks, real estate investments in stable economies. They also have access to offshore accounts and financial instruments that shield their assets from devaluation of the domestic currency. Moreover, they often have the resources to invest in income-generating businesses that can withstand hyperinflation. These investments, such as profitable enterprises, high-quality real estate, internationally traded commodities, can provide a steady stream of income and further enhance their wealth. Hyperinflation exacerbates income inequality. As prices skyrocket and wages struggle to keep pace, the purchasing power of the middle class diminishes significantly. Inflation erodes the value of fixed incomes including salaries, 
pensions, savings and investments which are vital sources for income for the middle class. Bank accounts and government bonds lose value with the devaluation of currency, hence eroding their savings they did for healthcare, education and retirement, making them more economically vulnerable. This further leads to a decline in the standard of living and financial stability, pushing many into near poverty conditions. The income gap widens as the middle class bears the brunt of hyperinflation, while the wealthy maintain their financial well-being. The middle class struggles to find avenues to preserve their wealth by not being able to invest into properties and other valuable assets. Hence, they face a significant setback in their ability to accumulate and safeguard wealth, further perpetuating income inequality. The high volatility and uncertainty associated with hyperinflation deter individuals from starting or expanding businesses. Access to credit becomes constrained as lenders become cautious about providing loans in a volatile economic climate. As a result, innovative ideas and potential job creation opportunities remain untapped, further hampering the middle class's ability to thrive. When inflation runs rampant, lenders adjust interest rates accordingly, meaning borrowers must repay loans at higher rates, creating a vicious cycle of debt burdens. So anyone who took on a debt during stable economic times may find themselves in a debt spiral during hyperinflation. This can ultimately lead to a default and further financial distress. This exacerbates the financial strain on the middle class as they face escalating interest payments along with rising prices. Hyperinflation often leads to social unrest and political instability within a society. As the cost of living soars, necessities become unaffordable for many, causing frustration anger, desperation among the population. This can manifest in protests, strikes and demonstrations demanding economic relief and political change. Moreover, hyperinflation erodes public trust in government institutions. Citizens perceive policymakers as responsible for the economic turmoil and accuse them of mismanagement and corruption. This loss of confidence in the government can lead to political instability, undermining the social fabric and impeding the nation's ability to address the crisis effectively. Public services and infrastructure are severely impacted as governments struggle to allocate sufficient resources to maintain them. The soaring prices of goods and services, coupled with limited revenue from taxes, triple public finances. Healthcare systems are particularly affected as medical supplies become scarce and healthcare professionals seek better opportunities elsewhere. Education quality declines due to inadequate funding affecting the prospects of the population. Infrastructure projects are delayed or abandoned, leading to crumbling roads, bridges and utilities, further hindering economic development and social well-being. Brain drain soars high as professionals seek to leave for better opportunities and more stable economies. Lawlessness becomes rampant as people who are now victims of escalating prices take matters into their own hands. Poverty is on the rise as a significant portion of the population plunges into it. The cost of living outpaces wages increases, which further widens the wealth gap within the society. The middle class and the poor suffer disproportionately, exacerbating income inequality and social divisions, ultimately affecting the mental and physical health of the population. The stress and anxiety of financial uncertainty, struggling to make ends meet and witnessing the deterioration of living conditions can lead to increased rates of depression, anxiety disorders and other mental health issues. This can then have a serious impact on family dynamics and social cohesion. Financial hardships can strain relationships, leading to increased domestic conflicts and disrupt social support networks. This further compounds the overall well-being and resilience of the society. Overall, it's a complete collapse of the social network as all fragments of society start decomposing. So this begs the question, what can be done during hyperinflation? Well, to combat hyperinflation and build a resilient society, sound economic policies and effective governments are crucial. Governments must prioritize fiscal discipline, ensuring responsible spending and managing budget deficits. This includes implementing measures such as reducing subsidies, controlling public debt and rationalizing public expenditures. Monetary policies must also be carefully managed to maintain price stability. Central banks should pursue prudent monetary measures, including setting appropriate interest rates, regulating the money supply, and conducting effective open market operations. These policies help control inflationary pressures and restore confidence in the currency. Additionally, 
government should focus on promoting a favorable business environment that encourages investment, innovation, and job creation. This involves reducing bureaucratic red tape, streamlining regulations, and fostering entrepreneurship. By creating an environment conducive to economic growth, governments can help mitigate the risk of hyperinflation and ensure a more prosperous society. Governments must prioritize transparency and accountability, ensuring that public funds are managed responsibly and ethically. Anti-corruption measures should be implemented, including robust legal frameworks, independent audit mechanisms, and effective law enforcement agencies. Appointment processes for key positions should be based on qualifications and expertise rather than political connections. In simple words, ensure meritocracy for all appointments. Hence, strengthening institutions and upholding the rule of law. Supporting small and medium-sized enterprises to create opportunities for economic growth and job creation. Government should provide incentives, training programs and access to capital for aspiring entrepreneurs. This enables the middle class to participate in the economy and build resilience against the impact of hyperinflation. Addressing hyperinflation often requires international cooperation and support. Countries facing hyperinflation can benefit from collaboration with international financial institutions such as the IMF, World Bank and regional development banks. These institutions can provide technical expertise, financial assistance and policy guidelines to help stabilize the economy and restore confidence. Similarly, cooperation among nations can facilitate trade agreements, investment opportunities and access to stable currencies. Encouraging foreign direct investment and promoting exports can diversify the economy and reduce dependence on domestic resources. Debt relief and restructuring programs may also be necessary to alleviate the burden of unsustainable debt levels. International partners can work with affected countries to renegotiate debts, extended repayment periods, and provide concessional financing. In this comprehensive exploration of hyperinflation, I have laid bare the harsh reality behind its impact on society by shedding light on how hyperinflation enriches that 1% elite while suppressing all other segments of society, especially the middle class. It is only through a collective effort, bolstered by effective policies, that we can strive to mitigate the negative effects of hyperinflation, safeguard societal well-being, and build a more equitable future for all.